one breed of professional definitely not seen as heroes are continuity announcers. I was one myself once. In fact, the surgical precision with which they slice into end credits has been branded by some as tantamount to butchery. Would you please sort out the idiots that interrupt the titles at the end of programmes, and in particular the beautiful music? It spoils the enjoyment when they cram them into one corner of the screen. Why does the BBC persist in allowing moronic announcers to talk over the end credits of programmes? It's not only disrespectful to the programme makers, but insulting to the viewers, most of whom are well capable of reading and understanding a TV guide. Don't hold back, Andrew. Tell us what you really think. So, who decides which programmes get the chop? Well, let's send special correspondent Hugh Yeeman to the butcher shop, otherwise known as BBC Presentation, and see what they've got to say for themselves. Have you ever watched a programme waiting for that all-important cliffhanger, or been lost in the appreciation for the music specifically composed for it, and then all of a sudden, the war with the continuity announcer begins? Get ready to meet Robin Hood. Can't they just wait until one programme is finished before they trail the next one? I'm here to see Claire Wildey, head of BBC Media Planning, to find out why the BBC feels the need to intrude on its own programmes. Now, which one's the squeeze switch? The reason we do it is really to try and navigate the viewers around the BBC content. 75% um, of homes in the UK actually have digital now, and so they can have up to 300 channels. In actual fact, we lose up to 60, 70% of our viewers as soon as the end credits. Oh, watch out there. Normally. As soon as the end credits start rolling, we lose them. But if we place the really good trail there, then that is relevant to the viewer and the audience, then we actually can revert that figure so that we have 70% staying to watch the next programme. Do you not think that viewers have the right to watch a programme in its entirety? Well, we hope that you can still actually see the credits of the programme, the and we do actually watch. look Turn at programmes in advance and try to make sure that we don't pick programmes which have got a sensitive yeah, ending. Yeah, and yeah, if it yeah. is a sensitive Next, ending, then we invariably won't squeeze that programme. Last week, the bear man of Kamchatka had an emotional end with a bear dying and a Torchwood trail was played over this. A grisly sci-fi story tonight on BBC Two and BBC... No, it must have been a menu, and a Torchwood trail wouldn't have been on that. Well, I'm not too convinced. I can't answer that purely because I don't think that happened. Whoops, I think I've had a nerve. Does it matter to you how many people complain? Will it change your policy? In actual fact, I'd actually like to see us uh, utilising end credits more, but actually doing it in a creative way that is right for the audience, it's relevant and timely, and it's giving them the messages that they want. The BBC does take viewers' comments seriously, but in the digital age, they've got to be competitive. Viewer correspondent Hugh Yeaman there, well, just there, actually. <laughs> Those boxes, they really are quite small. I can fully understand people not being able to see them properly, but... Result! After ruminating on her chat with our Hugh, Claire took another look at the schedules and pulled another planned trail for Torchwood from the end of this week's Natural World and has reassessed the suitability and audience crossover on other titles. So, success for people power. You're the man. Anyway, up next, as those jolly old continuity announcers say, drama. <laughs>